Yeah, hello everyone. I'm very happy to be here. I'm your moderator today, and I want to please uh, Sascha Dölke from DWP to come on stage, Michael Spitz from 360X, Dr. Nette Domes from X Circle, Professor Walpe from Technical University Munich, and Jazz Putin Puraka from Union Investment. And warm welcome to the panelists. <laughs> So today our topic is NFTs drawing creativity innovative business models. Sounds very fancy and I think we all are very excited about what is really possible with NFTs. Um, I think the most of you know what, are, what NFTs are. NFTs are non-fungible tokens. So we are talking about a unique uh, representation on the blockchain and um, as the most know, um, as, as a monkey picture maybe, it's maybe more than a monkey picture and I'm happy to discuss with our panelists what we, can, we could do possibly with um, NFTs and um, I would please you to introduce yourself and maybe also to give the audience uh, maybe a quick outlook which touch points do you have with NFTs um, already? Would you like to start? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Jess Putin Prorakal. I am head of corporate development at Uni Union Investment. Uh, we are a big German asset manager. And uh, yeah, the major touch point is uh, NFT as an investment opportunity for us. And uh, I think this is really exciting for me to discuss this today with you guys. Uh, what's your view? And yeah, happy to join the panel. Hello, my name is Annette, Annette Doms. Um, what we do is to try to uh, accelerate the future of digital ownership through art. So I'm founding partner of X Circle. X Circle is an immersive curated online gallery for art, so uh, technology-based art. And I'm also co-founder of Niftory. Niftory is a Web3 consultancy. We uh, explain or help companies to understand Web3 and uh, to realize pro projects in Web3. Uh, you can sum it. Okay. Hi, my name is Michael. I'm co-founder and co-CEO of 360X, uh, which we are regulated uh, marketplace for actually security tokens. So I should be sitting on a different panel from yesterday. But we also have uh, investments in three different what we call verticals. And uh, one of them, I think, is the most uh, closer one to NFT. So it's, it's called 360X Music AG. So we are not very creative in names. Uh, but ultimately, they also run a a company for utility tokens, 100% subsidy, which is called 12 by 12, which is the size of a, a long play vinyl, so 12 inch by 12 inch, that's the name. And they've done quite a lot of projects on the NFT side. And I'm going to talk about why I believe NFT is a tro Trojan horse for security tokens. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Sascha Dörker. I'm head of digitization management at DWP Bank, which is a market infrastructure provider in the securities transaction service environment. And we are we are just announced uh, a new digital assets platform called VPNX. And of course, in that context, we are looking closely uh, from the investment side uh, on NFTs and the possibility, of course, what a platform of the future has to endure in order to process NFTs and serve customer retail customer demand mainly. And warm welcome to Professor Welpe from Munich. Hello. <laughs> like to introduce I'm, yourself also to the audience. I'm Isabel. I uh, am a strategy professor doing lots of research on the influence of new tech on business models, how companies will make money, how we organize work. And uh, I'm excited for Web3, as you all know. I'm uh, recently particularly excited about how AI and Web3 will converge. And because AI is more front end and Web3 is more back end, and together I think uh, they will bring about a lot of change to uh, the, the world as we know it. Thank you, everyone. So, Sasha, you told me just um, that you announced uh, your platform, and um, I'm wondering. What is DWP also planning itself? How you would like to position? Because we know DWP are always from the traditional world. What are your plans in regards of NFTs? Maybe as an opening remark, uh, what is really interesting in the Web3 or crypto space, what we are experiencing, at least uh, in our client base, that, uh, is that retail clients are driving the adoption and innovation and not institutional as we usually know it in the traditional space. Uh, therefore, NFT, of course, is a demand topic. And we decided also to sponsor the NFT Talents program of Frankfurt School, um, 
why we why we did that actually for three drivers uh, we saw one is that we see a lot of untapped potential uh, regarding nfts uh, which brings opportunity but also risks uh, regarding our platform um, because uh, nfts are key enablers for the platform economy of the future in my opinion uh, and the merge of digital world offerings with uh, physical world offerings uh, which is something we are looking closely at the second driver is basically customer demand interest. We, we see a lot of interest from our clients to start their crypto and Web3 journey with utility. And uh, utility is uh, based uh, in NFTs, for example, some kind of proof of attendance type of NFT combined with, uh, with a financial benefit or access to services is something we are looking close, uh, closely at. But interesting, uh, on the interesting side is also we, we have a lot of demand also from creators uh, that are concerned about regulatory impl implications and how to process it on a regulatory investment platform, which we are offering. And the third is mainly about challenge, challenge to get into that space um, because uh, we see a lot of hype in the NFT uh, sector. Um, th that hype is clouding judgment of, often for roadmaps and re we don't think that our platform needs to be ready next year. Uh, for that type, uh, but we need to prepare, and uh, an important part of that is education, and that's why we are uh, we immerse ourselves in the NFT talents program, um, because I truly believe it needs a management shift when you look from our perspective to NFTs, because it's not classical, traditional product management. Uh, we used to know uh, it better than the customer, what the customer needs, but it's more about community building, curation, uh, going forward and therefore understanding uh, of NFT space is really important for us. Maybe to give the audience also an idea what could a possible client do with NFTs actually, not only in the financial services market. Um, Annette, would you like maybe to share some experience also from the creator side because our topic is also driving creativity and maybe how can we democratize and um, support people who are working in this area? Yeah, especially with art, you can do many things with uh, a crypto collectible it is. Of course, it's about the digital ownership, so you own this digital artwork, you have it in a wallet, you can also trade the artwork. And uh, yeah, in terms of creativity, what we also do is uh, building an ecosystem around an artist. Yeah, So an NFT is much more than just a, a JPEG, it's a programmable um, technology based on smart contracts and has a lot of um, um, utility value so that's what we work as well so it's it's, it's about uh, collectibles but it's it's also uh, about identity it's about um, token enabled access yeah so with an nft you have access to the community you have access to events you have uh, access to tickets you can do so many things with with an nft and also as an artist yeah so if if somebody has has an, uh, an artwork from you you can say okay next time i airdrop you another work yeah so that you have more and uh, you are able to um to, to visit me in my studio and uh, you you can get um, special prices on on my work, yeah, and and this is how how it's very um, the, which was it's important to to use an NFT, not just as a collectible, but really to to um, to use the whole ecosystem and the whole possibilities around a non fungible token, yeah. And I know, Michael, you did also projects in the area of NFTs, also with famous people. Maybe you would also to like to share some um, benefits also, maybe from the side, which are not the collectible sites, more the utility side. So what can we do with NFTs also? Sure. Um, so I'm going to focus today a little bit more uh, on the music side and not so much on the art side because I, I leave that for you. Um, so I think what was interesting over the past year that our colleagues in Berlin for uh, 366 Music have done. So. They started off uh, very close to Frankfurt here. We did an, an NFT for a German rapper called Haftbefehl. He's from Frankfurt Offenbach, uh, very famous well known, in this well area, known. very, very well known. And the point is, of course, how does an artist engage then with his community, not just about Discord and as a becoming influencer, but what's the benefit to the fans? So if you collect uh, all, 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 all three out of the five NFTs, you ultimately are eligible for a hoodie of him. If you collect four out of five, you get, a, you get access to a very specific 
uh, comic that was only created together with that. So that's the utility. Or if you collect all five of them, next time you visit a concert, you actually get two upgrades in like six rows further closer to the artist. So I think this is, and then they're gone. The utility is gone once you use it. So this is one of the things uh, that we use. There's another case where, as, as you all, all guys know, there's a, a golden, golden Schallplatte, a golden record. So, uh, but it's quite expensive to produce. It's like, I think, 2,000 euros, and though only four or five are produced. So the artist gets one, the manager gets one, then whoever the label gets one, the, uh, like the CEO of the label, and then another guy. But it's like 30, 40 people working on it. So we're basically one of the major labels that they work with, basically rolled it out to the entire company, and now you roll out like 40 or 50 of them in an NFT. So they are really motivated as employees of that, of that major label in order to, you know, they, they have something for them te uh, tangible, although it's not an NFT, that they can look at and share and once they collect more. Um, there's another thing where there's a collectible, uh, you know, we did a, a transaction for Deutsche Grammophon where they, they sold classical vinyl, you know, and then they took all of the all of this hundred, so it was a limited box of a hundred, and they sold it for I don't know, I think it's fifty euros, and all of these fans bought this limited edition collection. But we asked them, do you also want to have a digital add-on, and that's going to cost you another twenty-five euros? And I think like sixty-three of the hundred were actually also buying the digital add-on. So, and what you do with that digital add-on, you become an owner of the actual music you can reproduce. So we cut it into 100 pieces, the partitur, and basically they can then reuse it, reproduce it for themselves in order to kind of compose with it. So I think there are a lot of possibilities there where the music world has really adopted. And now I come to my m main theory, as most of the banks will now be granted all of this crypto custody license and, and so on and so forth, and they're gonna celebrate the day they get it, but then they could say, oh, what am I going to do now? Because ultimately, you need to roll out wallets. And you're going to go, oh, you have to buy Bitcoin and ETH. It's going to be a fun way, trust me. But uh, if you go out and saying, how about you want to have a, a music piece? Do you want to have something there? We managed over the past 12 months just to roll out 4,000 wallets just with music. And it doesn't cost you a lot. It's, you know, you can have it with your logo of the bank. That is an NFT as well. And although these are only Web3 wallets, so we differentiate between Web3 wallets and, uh, and investment wallets. But it is a very good case for you as a regulated institution to go and, and engage with your customers because they first open up a wallet NFT. That's why I call it the Trojan horse. But then you can sell them the security products later on. Hopefully. Maybe just to summarize, so we heard we can have collectibles, we can engage with our clients, we can build a relationship to our clients. Um, maybe Professor Welpe, I know you are from the educational part and I think you are also focused on strategic points. What do you see as, because you thought already, you see it as an important back end, right? So in which areas do you see also additional use cases? Well, as I, as I said um, at the beginning, I think when, uh, you know, the potential of AI becomes more apparent and uh, I learned just, I think, uh, last week about this open letter that tech leaders have uh, on the internet where they call for regulation and and actually um, uh, um, um, uh, a stop of uh, training further AI data sets for fear of them, you know, becoming totally unregulated, uh, creating deep fakes where the average person, you know, will create a copy of Philip Sandner and we will be unable to say, was this Philip or was this a deep uh, fake? And so I think that Free is really for everyone. <laughs> Pardon me? Free beer for everyone. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> um, and I think that's a moment where you know blockchain and the p potential to to actually have an immutable uh, trace back to uh, you know identity or, or verification, uh, you know potentially can really shine. I think that's a, a, a very foreseeable case. And apart from that, you know the business models in Web two they're all based on uh, intermediaries. The the Google, Facebook, Amazon's being the intermediaries. So when I talk to companies, uh, I talk to them about the potential of Web three applications to engage with their communities, whether it's customers or applicants or just fans. You know, so many firms 
have actual fans and they have no idea who these fans are because they never interact with them. And so I think every company, it's such a low hanging fruit, should have a QR code uh, in their stores or their headquarters where their fans can just go and scan the QR code and, you know, either work for an NFT or buy an NFT or are gifted an NFT if they do certain things. So you are in contact with them. And one uh, consumer based company I talked to the other day said, oh, we already have that. We have all the cards in the Apple wallet. And I said, exactly, <laughs> you have them in the Apple wallet. You know, Apple knows about it. Apple is the intermediary. And so I think the, the potential of all of Web3 and its applications, it's not something, you know, grandiose. It's very simple, actually. It's the potential to eliminate intermediaries and the potential to bring down transaction costs um, steeply, thereby making business models and business interactions profitable and 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 viable that are not viable without technology that enables you to uh, do business without intermediaries with low transaction costs and you know they're everywhere and and web3 is called the creator economy for a reason because it is particularly relevant for everyone who is original who manufactures everything original data because now you have a, a link to it you can sell it you can rent it for movie makers for the music industry uh, for your own talent you know you can go out and uh, sort of rent out your time and if people believe your time will be more valuable in the future you know they can buy that today and and cash in tomorrow so to say but but we are not there because I you know I think there you know we need a UX like Chat GPT that everyone can use everyone can understand and it's not quite there yet in in Web three the usability is is really still quite horrible I would say yeah I, I have to agree I think you have to be experienced to work in this area and I think we have to make it more easy for everyone and just I'm just wondering um, what is on your investment planning in regards of NFTs. And um, I think we had just an announcement from the Bafin. They gave also more clarity for the financial services sector. What is an NFT? Is it a, is it a security or not? Maybe you can just also comment on the Bafin statement from your investment side. Yeah, yes, for sure. Um, yeah, currently we are at the early beginning uh, if you are talking about investing in NFTs. Um, from our side, we uh, did a broader approach. That means we looked at NFTs in the context of alternative investment. And in this field, uh, NFTs from its market potential is pretty interesting, but relatively to the I would say uh, well-known alternative investments like private equity, um, infrastructure investments is pretty small. That's why for us it's currently not a strategic priority, but uh, we are, I would say, uh, monitoring it. And that means we are doing some explore exploratory uh, use cases, for example, understand it. But um, I think you mentioned a really crucial point. The regulation regarding NFTs are missing to wrap it in a mutual fund. That means the core question, is the NFT a security or not? Uh, when you talk about fractional ownership, for example, yeah, uh, I think there's um, a long way to go. And uh, I think we are still at the early beginning. I like the use cases you already mentioned. I, I think it will also have a kind of marketing effect to get uh, customer at, uh, attraction, uh, but uh, to scale it up, um, and to use your platform as well with the, I would say, a uh, major part with NFTs, I think there's, uh, in the long run, there's a potential, but it's a long way to go. Yeah, that's my point of view. Maybe a question to the panelists who did already NFT projects. Maybe you would also, to share your thoughts, um, what was the most challenging part in implementing an NFT project? And maybe you can also give us like a quick summary. How did you start? What is the first touch point? How does it end? And um, what was the biggest challenge especially? Yeah, so we started last year, at the beginning of last year, and many things changed since that. Since that uh, many things became easier. So we started before the merge, and uh, so we had the question, and this is still an ongoing discussion about um, sustainable um, backgrounds and about carbon footprint and, and, and so on. And uh, so we, we had artists uh, that uh, really looked at uh, on, on what kind of blockchain we were minting. Yeah. So, for example, Tammy Cotil, she's doing environmental artworks. So what she did was, for example, a, a coral. And it, it's a coral on the first view, and on the second view, the coral is made out of um, plastic. Yeah. So you can see plastic shoes and plastic knives and plastic... 
um, ducks and so on. And for her, it was very important to, to mint on, on an environmental blockchain. So, and we decided for Polygon. So after the merge, it's much easier um, so we're working on, on Ethereum as well. And then it's, it's a lot about education. What we always realize is um, that, uh, yeah, so people, the, the, the most challenge thing is to install a wallet. Yeah? yeah, and we help in installing wallets and, and then people see how easy it is. Yeah, so it takes five minutes um, to install it. And, but it's important also to, to um, explain the security parts and what, what can happen. And, um, we are there, we accompany our clients uh, to do this right, and um, it's also about enabling an easy access, yeah? So we also offer in paying in fiat money, yeah? So, and, and then the transfer, of course, it's a wallet, so this is that something we have to explain, that in any case you need a wallet, but... Um, so the future is, will be full of wallets, yeah? so we will need it anyway, and uh, yeah, it's a good time to, to explain, but it's about education, so a lot, yeah. It's maybe an um, interesting point, if you heard about it, um, also Microsoft was planning to integrate into the Edge browser uh, a wallet solution, so we see more and more tech companies, but also banks and other um, intermediaries, who are thinking about, okay, maybe we should also be part of this new economy because of the new use cases. The more companies that come, the easier. And yeah, uh, yeah. definitely. And uh, thank you for the support for the um, education part also. I think every one of us uh, is contributing to it, and I love this about the web free space. Maybe, Michael, also, would you like to share also like the biggest challenge to implement the projects you talked about? I think um, it's always a trial, trial and error thing, and to us it was quite important to, if we're just going out NFTs for the sake of NFTs, and if no value is created, you're actually catering to a very small crypto crazy community. And so they're nice, they're all, they're all meet here in Frankfurt, end of March, and kind of that, that's all you're catering for. But if you start to engage with fans, if you, you really, if you get the artist to reach out, to use his Instagram account, and really going out to a totally different thing, the whole point of technology and NFT and does not become the biggest uh, asset. It really becomes a question, can I engage with the artist? Do I have a pre-listening experience and so on? And to us, we, we came to a point now where we felt it actually makes only sense in order to reach a, a larger audience if you combine it with something that they want to buy anyway. So in my example before, they want to buy a collector's box, vinyl. But if you add in something on top of it, they take it. And this is their first experience. Um, from our point of view, we are not in the business of making wallets or selling wallets, and it's just a question of there's a lack of infrastructure. I'm a firm believer that, uh, that actually customers, no matter whether it's Web3 or whether it's investment, will want to go with their preferred partner that they're catering now for their security purposes. So I think banks will have a, a pretty good shot at it. Uh, but at the same time, uh, in my old job, we were early stage investor in Curve uh, as Commerce Ventures, and we sold it to PayPal. So they also have a very good shot at it. Uh, so I think this is kind of the experience that you will have. So. Uh, if you're just a wallet provider, yes, MetaMask is right, and also some people will, will use Microsoft, but you don't want to trust your assets w uh, just on a browser, and it's a, it's a bad experience, you know. Go to the, go to the App Store, download the, the thing with the Fox, either in orange or in blue, then, you know, get some ease somewhere, then uh, uh, remember the 12 words, never forget it, but never share it. And if you lose it, actually your assets are gone. That's not a very good experience. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, I think it really a lot of people will go and ask, uh, I would like to call my bank or someone I trust, can you please reset my password? So I think this will be, and there will be a merge between Web3 wallet and investment wallet, and, and this will then help everyone to go in their, their in immersive Web3 metaverse experience. Just a small disclaimer, it was no financial advice. <laughs> Um, but I think that's the way, and maybe just to summarize, I mean, this, the, the, there are utilities, and now we have to find the right way, and I think there's not one right way. We saw Sasha's solution, we saw what you are doing, we saw Metamask, we saw what Microsoft is doing, and it's like in the old world, there are different partners where you're working with. There are maybe also the demand of to do it self-hosted in some cases, but would you like to add something, Sasha? 
Yeah, actually, I would because I'm working for an intermediary, so I have to yeah. fight the good fight, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and I totally agree because we have the same demand. And there's a funny trend uh, I'm experiencing because when I talk to banking executives, a lot of banking executives say NFT and crypto is a hobby with my child. And that is a big trend, in my opinion, and they are really looking towards banks to host that kind of hobby. What I, what I mean is uh, they are happy to pay an, an insurance premium, so to say, and to find a wallet that combines everything, which is usually with a trusted custodian. And I think that is a really interesting trend when you look on the demand side, when we talk about mass adoption, because a lot of mainstream clients are interested in that space, but they are stressed about different wallets, they are stressed about having different uh, access codes and so on. And I think um, that is something we try to understand better and target uh, with an offering as well. So I totally agree on that side. Yeah. Thank you for the insights. Um, I would like to give you also the chance to um, raise a question to the audience, to the, to the panelists. If you have a question, just raise your hands or via Telegram. Give you just a second. Currently, we do not have a question on Telegram. However, I will be updated now since you especially particularly asked for them. Maybe someone uh, will uh, not be shy anymore. Um, and in the room, we'll, we can equip you with microphones. We've done. Maybe I, I can add some, add one if uh, I hope it kind of doesn't expand the topic too much, but uh, recently the, um, I think it was uh, the, uh, was it Ursula von der Leyen or Christine Lagarde, one of them said um, there will be um, uh, very soon um, a, a certain duty to have a wallet, um, to carry identity passports, to carry something like vaccination uh, certificates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I think the phrase, the future will be full of wallets, as Annette put it, and uh, Michael, you referenced it as well, um, is uh, quite, uh, quite accurate. Um, just from a general viewpoint, would you say this is a very good notion or a very good, uh, or coming from a governmental entity, it's uh, kind of something that some people will shy away from? Maybe in one sentence, because I have formulated the question very long. <laughs> I think it's the future. Uh, pretty sure, because it's all about convenience and if you, uh, mm -hmm. imagine you have one wallet, your ID, your insurance stuff, even your half uh, gold platte, uh, <laughs> <laughs> amazing. And I'm pretty sure, depending on the uh, use case, maybe you want the public wallet from the government because it's very important, maybe it's about the real estate um, from your side, and maybe in other cases you prefer the the comfort that maybe tech companies are offering to you to use it uh, very easily. And Web3 will democratize uh, the whole internet, yeah? It's about digital ownership, and I guess so everything in Web3 will be an NFT, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> then, thanks for the, um, for the insights and uh, warm applause to the panelists. Thank you. Thank you.